we're gonna try and make the ultimate gain staging video today. I'm gonna talk about a wide array of topics uh, to include clipping, RMS, peak, and we may end up double backing and touching on something in regards to limiting, not sure yet. But I wanna make sure everyone is clear as to what exactly gain staging is to end the discussion. But first. <laughs> Before we get into gain staging, I want to talk a little bit about clipping. Clipping is when your audio signal goes above zero dB. Uh, it's always referred to as union or unity. Clipping sounds like distortion. A lot of other YouTubers have touched on analog and digital clipping. Basically, if you're working in the analog world, you're going to have hiss and hum in the background of your track. And so you're going to be trying to push the noise floor above that hiss or hum. Not all clipping is bad though. We'll go over soft clipping in another video, but for now we're gonna keep it at no clipping. Going into mixing, it's important that you have a reliable audio meter, one that preferably reads RMS and peak level. I use BX meter. I caught it on sale, it was a great buy, and I've continued to use it for the past three years. Some plugins like Ozone 8 have a built-in meter. It's a great tool, and with Plugin Boutique always throwing a sale up for Ozone and Isotope products, you might as well go ahead and get it. It's, it's worth it. And a lot of times it can be free if you buy something else. The one principle you have to learn to understand is audio summing. Audio summing or summing is the process by which all of your tracks individually are funneled into one single track. That's usually your master fader. It can also be called stereo out as it is in uh, Cubase, I believe. Now you may or may not know, mixing is performed in a series of steps. And the first in that sequence of steps is gain staging. There's three reasons mainly to gain stage. The first is that it gives you more control over the project. The second is that it gives you the ability to control what your plugins do. And three is to fend off ear fatigue. There's nothing worse than trying to mix way too loud. Give yourself 15 to 30 minutes of listening to your latest mix way too loud and you're gonna be sick of hearing it and you're gonna start making bad mixing decisions. We know that RMS measures overall loudness. We know that peak level measures momentary loudness. Both are equally important, and we talked about it in my last video on limiting. Opinions differ, and everyone has a way they do things. Here's how I do it. I start with the RMS level first, and I listen to the track, and I watch my meter. If I don't hear any distortion, then I move on to the next step in my mixing chain. But if I do hear distortion, and the clip light turns red, then I know I have a problem, and I need to work on that problem, and I begin looking for the instrument that I need to turn down. There's lots of questions floating around the internet about what the acceptable level is to gain stage at. The standard is minus 18 dB, but nothing is set in stone. My personal preference is anywhere between minus 18 dB and minus 12 dB. You just want to leave yourself some headroom. Audio mixing is simply about making tasteful decisions to achieve a certain sound. Gain staging is the first step in this process. If you were to export your project only after gain staging at minus 18 or minus 12 dB, and you took it out to your car and listened to it, it would be significantly lower than what you would hear on a mastered track. That's completely normal. Most music is actually commercially mastered between minus nine and minus three dB. I saw someone else in another YouTuber's chat that asked if they could just normalize their audio to minus 18 dB. And the problem with normalizing is that what normalizing does is normalizing takes the loudest part of the audio signal and it brings up the overall loudness of the audio signal to match it. So it's kind of like you need to nail a board to a wall and you have a hammer and a pair of pliers. And the right tool for the job is obviously the hammer, but instead you choose to take the pliers and turn this nail into the wall. Um, it, is it gonna get the job done? Mm, yeah, kinda but it's probably gonna take way longer than it needs to and you're gonna spend a lot more time fixing things that you don't need to fix. So it's a great tool normalizing, don't get me wrong, but it's not the right tool for the job. I shot this video because I feel like there's so many people doing gain staging videos and there's things that are being left out. So I'd like to end the gain staging debate. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments box below. If you haven't already done it, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.